Welcome back to the Sisters Podcast. I, of course, am Betty Tucker, and joining me today are Noodles and Talia. Would you ladies like to say hello? Hi. <laughs> hello. How are y'all guys doing today? Uh, I'm at the end of like a massive heat wave in the UK, so I've been standing out in the garden, just like enjoying the rain. I'm like, I missed <laughs> you. It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been good. I've been, um, you know, gathering some information. I've been relaxing. It's the weather here has been hot, and then it's been raining all of a sudden. Like always, it's weird here in Florida. Yeah, it rains like every day in Florida. The weather is like the men in Florida. <laughs> Just weird. <laughs> yep, Florida man. <laughs> Maybe it's the weather that does it to to them. I don't Maybe. know. Maybe. Maybe because they're aliens. Back to my Area 51 theory. Anyway, continue, please, ladies. (laughs) They don't understand rain. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) um, So, yeah, today on the podcast, I will be giving a story, and so will Talia. And then we will be doing our news of the weird over something that kind of relates to the first story, but it's it's on a different side, the different side of the uh, earth. So I'll go ahead and jump right into mine. The Alaskan Triangle. The border of the Alaskan Triangle stretches from Barrow on the state's north side and north coast to Anchorage and then to Juneau across the southern coast and includes vast areas largely unexplored. Sprawling forests, icy mountain peaks, and desolate tundra are clearly not the safest places in the world. Search and rescue missions that happen in the hundreds each year in the Triangle rarely find a trace of the missing dead or alive. It's just as if they were swallowed up by the great nothing in the never-ending story. The Alaskan Triangle first received widespread attention when the U.S. House Majority Leader, Hale Boggs, his airplane vanished somewhere between Anchorage and Juneau in 1972. The disappearance triggered one of the country's largest ever search and rescue operations, involving 40 military aircraft, 50 civilian planes, and 39 days of searching an area of 32,000 square miles. Yet the search and rescue rescue shed zero results. No wreckage, no debris, no human remains, nothing. It wasn't the only aircraft lost either. Back in 1950, a military craft with 44 passengers had disappeared without a trace. An Cessna 340 carrying a pilot and four passengers vanished in 1990 never to be seen or heard from again. Disappearances without a trace are strangely typical of the cases in this region, and the cases aren't rare. Since 1988, more than 16,000 people have vanished in the Alaskan Triangle. That translates to roughly four out of every thousand people missing, more than twice the national average. But not all missing go missing while aboard planes. Many are on foot. Hikers are a majority of the missing people. Now, you may think inexperienced hikers plus extreme environments equals lost, injured, dead hikers. And you would probably be right. However, the indigenous people of the Tlingit tribe in Alaska have a different theory. The Tlingit people date back over 10,000 years. They reside in the Pacific Northwest of the United States, and they have their own explanation for the high amount of missing people. Evil spirits called the Kushtaka. The Kushtaka are shapeshifters half man, half otter, that lure people into the water with fake cries in order to steal their human spirit and drown them. Now again, you're probably imagining a creature and thinking, oh, half man, half otter, that sounds kind of cute. But you have to remember, in the language of the Tlingit people, otter is interchangeable with the word ape or monkey. So by now you know where I'm going with this, right? The Tlingit people are describing a half man, half ape, or in other words, a Sasquatch. According to Tlingit folklore, there exists a half-man, half-animal with the ability to lure innocent people and trap them. The Kushtaka is considered evil and overwhelmingly regarded with a certain level of trepidation. There are instances of malevolent behavior on part of the Kushtaka. The Kushtaka are credited with merrily tricking Tlingit sailors further offshore to die. They are also known for imitating the cries of an infant or screams of a woman lure hapless victims in the rivers or preying on small children. 
But who's to say that the missing people of Alaska weren't simply lured away by Kushtaka? Until officials find a definite reason for why and where the people disappear in the Alaskan Triangle, my money is on the Otterman. What do you guys think? Y'all know that I'm, like, kind of obsessed with Sasquatch, and so I've, I've read this story before. Um, but it seems kind of interesting that, you know, you have the Bermuda Triangle, where things disappear in. I don't think a Sasquatch is involved there unless it's a water squatch. And then you have, <laughs> in Alaska, you have the Alaskan Triangle, and people just seem to vanish. So maybe it is a malevolent spirit of this creature that's doing it. I mean... I've never really looked into any Sasquatch stuff. Like, this is such an American thing. <laughs> like, like Sasquatch, Bigfoot, like, all those sort of names. It's like the same thing, isn't it? Yes. Sasquatch, Bigfoot, uh, Skunk Ape, the Abominable Snowman. Is the, is the we'll Abominable Snowman believed to be part of it? Mm -hmm. I believe to be. I can, uh, Sasquatch, yep. Just an albino one. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> that's true. Oh, man, I just... <laughs> kind of like a polar bear, I guess, because, you know, white environment, you want to blend into your surroundings. Oh, my God. That was so funny and true. <laughs> I, I want to... Um... All right, I'm, I'm literally going to cut in pictures of the fucking snowman from Monsters, Inc. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I honestly... I, I think, like, in... I think um, there's so many stories and legends about like different kind of, kinds of like Sasquatch that I I think that creature obviously must have been real at some point, but like who knows now? You know who knows? Maybe they're like hiding away, obviously, because we never see them, and um, or like they actually became extinct, but like. It must have been real at some point. <laughs> I really think so. <laughs> yeah, because that's the thing. It's like every culture seems to have a name for one of those creatures. And you know, it's just like when we were talking about the, the, the vampire of Highgate. Yeah. Every culture seems to have a word for vampire. And every culture also seems to have a name for Sasquatch. Well, we don't have anything like that in England as far as I know. Oh, I'll do some looking. I bet you I'll find one. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna look into this and like editing me is gonna just put on the screen now you're a dumb fook. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I I've got questions. So this Alaskan Triangle is like the Bermuda Triangle. Kinda. I mean, te technically, any three places that kind of line up that way are considered a triangle. But it's just mysterious that so many things have so many things you know planes and people have just gone missing in this area because I mean. Just the amount of people who go missing every year is insane. I mean, four out of every thousand people go missing? Like, what's happening in Alaska? There's not a whole lot of people there. It just... Um, well, either, either way, like, that's really scary. Like, a lot. I mean, like, my... my I, ha I kind of have um, I can't even remember what this is from. I know it's from a TV show or a movie or something I watched years ago, but I remember there was this thing about this guy who just had, like... Have you ever seen those people with the um, genetics thing where they've, with the, they're, like, called werewolf people where they just grow hair everywhere? Mm -hmm. There was, like, yeah, that oh document. God, yeah. yeah. What if it was just, like, yeah. a really tall dude with that problem? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You know? Could be, could be yeah. <laughs> it could be, but... And if I'm wrong, let me know. I think that is predominantly a um, South and Central American trait. Mm, that's interesting. That would be a long venture to go all the way up there. And what would be the odds that this person would be up there? But you know, like, what if, like, bad then, like, actually, like, people confused, like, all the people that had that trait as you know, oh, look, a Sasquatch. Like, that's so mean. <laughs> like, that would suck. And, like, it's not really a Sasquatch for real, but, like, a real person that just sadly has that trait. Now, I've always wanted to believe in Sasquatch, and I, you know, in my heart, I believe he's out there. But I kind of get a feeling that a lot of the 
sightings of a Sasquatch is the sighting of a malnourished bear. That way, you know, it looks like a man because it's, you know, it stands on its hind legs and yeah. it's not as full as a, you know, well-fed bear would be. It, it may look like a human, you know, like a humanoid. Yeah, because there was that whole, um, like, pig lady thing that they used to do for, like, um, like carnivals and shows and, like, freak shows and stuff like that back in, like, Victorian times, wasn't there, where they'd shave a bear? And put a dress mm-hmm. on it, and like, mm-hmm. but like I've seen images of bears and things and stuff where they've had like mites. Maybe that's more something to do with it, because like they still have hair, but it's very like patchy, for want of a better word. Mm-hmm. And I can only assume that you know bear. I've never been up close to a bear, but I can only assume they don't smell that nice. Mm. So, but yeah, so I don't know. It's kind of weird. Kind of weird. So I got a question, Betty. You're um you're a big follower of the whole Bigfoot Sasquatch thing, right? Mhm. Have you ever seen him? What got you into it? I've never seen one now. However, I went to the Bigfoot Museum not too long ago. Ooh. Up in up in North Georgia in Blue Ridge. And I actually did a Facebook live stream <laughs> about it while I was there. And oh, I was fascinated. Yeah, I remember. I mm-hmm. remember I saw the live stream. You they had like, they really had, like, some really interesting stuff there. Oh, stuff from awesome. all over. And there, what was crazy is that if you look at the map, and there's a particular website you can go to, and I, I don't have it on me right now. I'll try to find it and add it to the description on the bottom of our video. But there's actually a website you can go to, and it's um, firsthand accounts of Bigfoot sightings in your area. And... There's been sightings within a 20 mile radius of my house. <laughs> so, you never know. He's out there. <laughs> so, what you're telling us is your husband is actually Bigfoot, and that's why you've brought this up. <laughs> that's, you know what? That's my way of telling you guys that I'm married to Sasquatch. Is what it is. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm joking. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, geez. So, yeah, that is the story of the Alaskan Triangle. I guess we can keep on moving here. Polly, are you ready with your story? Yes, I'm ready. Um, my story today is like, um, kind of like recently from Puerto Rico, a legend um, is called the Gargoyle from Puerto Rico. And in Spanish, is Gaigola. So... Um, like back in 2018, like in Puerto Rico, in a town uh, called Barceloneta, people uh, started like finding their chickens and goats like kill and drain of blood. So, and apparently the witnesses over there told uh, the police like supposedly it's like a gargoyle because it was like a creature that looks like the famous like chupacabra <laughs> but like with wings like really wide wings and just so huge really huge so like one of the witnesses told the police that um, she heard like a lot of like weird noises at, outside and they were loud and so she went out to investigate and even though it was nighttime she could see like this really huge creature like on her rooftop and the most like visible feature feature she could see was the wings because they were so huge and and like all this it, it happened all so fast but like she said that she heard the creature let out this really creepy scream or screech, whatever you want to say. And it just flew off, flew off out of nowhere. And she never saw it again. And yeah, she was just freaked out because, you know, like, you never, you never, you know, she never seen that. And all the witnesses is the same, but like they've been finding their chickens and goats killed, drain of blood. Um, they others have said they have seen like something really huge fly by, 
with really white wings. And then, you know, that was all, like, in 2018. I started, like, doing, like, you know, some researching. And it, actually, the, that, the gargoyle is not really new in, um, in Puerto Rico, especially in that town. Like, I actually found out that that creature has been sighted, like, around, sounds like, the 90s. Especially um, 1998, that's when it actually, like, really started, like, escalate, like, the sightings. And it's just, like, nobody, nobody really knows. Like, there's been theories that it could be, like, a bear and a really, like, ancient bear that, you know, never really been discovered. And that lives in a cave and like it only comes out rarely only just to like eat and all that it's just so many theories but like no one really knows we just don't know what what it is and it's just recently that people started seeing it again so whereabout is this based again sorry it's in Puerto Rico in a town called Barceloneta. Okay. Uh, that one, that, and it's that place specifically. I don't know why. Maybe, maybe it could be just like that, like it's home, you know, like the home, home of that creature. Because like, I don't know if you guys know, but like Puerto Rico, you know, it's an island. And like, we have like so many caves out there. Some of them that hasn't been even like properly like being explored. So who knows? Maybe one of those caves are the home of that creature. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, there's no much like I couldn't really find like so many like uh, information about it because it's like it's so rare, rare people seeing seeing it. But it's really interesting. I'm not saying that it's just a hybrid chupacabra and sasquatch, but I'm not not saying that it's not a hybrid <laughs> chupacabra sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Or maybe like a humanoid with wings. Like, I don't know. So it's just weird. There's so many theories out there. We don't really know what it is. And yeah. <laughs> Because you're describing having the big wings, like, like yeah. all that's coming to my mind is, like, you know those giant fox bats? <laughs> yes, the flying foxes. Like, they're, f- like yeah. they're from the Philippines, so they're, like, quite a way away, but do you know what? They're fruit bats. Yeah, they're f- they eat figs. Yeah, they just eat fruit, so I wouldn't see them, I mean, why? Okay, if it's a bear, why would it just drain the blood of animals and not eat the animal? There's not that, I mean, there's not a whole lot of nutritional value in blood. I know, it's so weird because people are only finding those animals, like, just drain of of their blood. Like, it's gone. That's all there, there is left. Nothing else is gone. Just like, you know, like a vampire wood or, like, uh, that famous uh, creature from Puerto Rico, too, the Chupacabra. Yeah, the chupacabra gets round because it's supposed to be in South and Central America also. How weird. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Okay, so um, while while we've been talking about this, I did a little bit of a search online. And currently, it is not too far away. There is a bird that drinks blood. Okay, (laughs) This, this is me on Google. There is a bird that drinks blood called the vampire ground finch. And it is like less than like 3,000... No, it's just over 3,000 kilometers away from Puerto Rico is its native habitat. <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> That's very interesting. They're flying in. So what? It, maybe it's like a fucking mutated giant version of this bird that's just come in like, Give me all your blood! <laughs> <laughs> Could be, yeah. You said it was 2018. So that was last year. Yes, yes, it was, yes, it was, like, 
it's been new there's been newer sightings but like that like there's been older older sightings from like the 90s at the the end of the 90s well i was kind of thinking like i wonder yeah especially since natal brought up you know the particular finch that's only like would you say three thousand kilometers away Mm -hmm, but it's still a finch it's a small bird you know what i mean (laughs) right but I'm kind of wondering, too, if Puerto Rico maybe got new animals kind of introduced after, like, in the remnants of Maria. Mm. Because with, you know, shifting tides and, you know, wind and everything else, like, there's no telling what was put onto the island or taken off of it, you Mm. know? So maybe some kind of creature was kind of planted there. From, from what I can find about this, but, like, the only... I just had a little Google, like, animals that live near Puerto Rico and drink blood, because that's the Google searches that I have on my computer. Um, <laughs> and I had a little look, and it says, like, it's, it's most famous for its unusual diet. Um, when an alternative sources are scarce, the vampire finch occasionally feeds by drinking the blood of other birds, mostly the Nazca and, blue, and blue-footed boobies. Oh, not the boobies. No, he drinks oh. the boobies. <laughs> oh. uh, they peck the skin with sharp beaks until blood is drawn. Uh, curiously, the boobies do not offer much resistance against this. Boobies like being pecked. What do we What do we learn today? Uh, <laughs> it's believed the behavior evolved from pecking behavior uh, used to clean parasites and plumage of the booby. So, I think I think like it might hold water. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of yeah, interesting. I... I really think so. I don't know. After this, um, maybe I do more research, and I'm like, maybe if I found something more like interesting, then I let you guys know and see, because I'm really interested in it. Because like, I never knew about this creature until like last year, because like, you know, Barcelona is not really like that town is not close to where I used to live. So I didn't know about it. So I was like, huh, this is really creepy. So I started doing research and, and yeah, it's, it's way older than I thought it was. Maybe like, I don't know, like, do you know what I mean when I say like creatures and things like that? Like we've got, we've got two stories today about like creatures that have been sighted by people and like that's what they've been guessed to be. And like these, these kind of stories always kind of fascinate me because it's like, Do those creatures actually exist? Or is it just perception? Mm -hmm. Because, like, I can't tell you the amount of times that I've put a a pile of fresh laundry on a chair in my bedroom and then gone to sleep and woke up in the middle of the night to think someone was sitting on that chair. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, like, maybe there's something to, like, creature stories in this context where, like, what if it's just, like, people have perceived what they've perceived and they haven't investigated and just ran because they're scared? And then the story gets circulated, more people see it, oh, it must be this. Yeah, that's... That's very, very possible, especially in in Puerto Rico. That's very, like, possible in places that are, like, in towns that are, like, from the mountains and stuff like that, you know, that are isolated from, like, the city and all that. It's very possible that, you know, these stories, you know, just keep spreading around. And maybe they're not what they are actually like they think it is you know i mean i i it could be it could just be what it like as people say it is it's like this freaky creature that comes to like drink blood and do weird shit but like do you know what i mean like we we have no way of knowing and that's like part of the fun of this is like we sit here and just come up with ideas <laughs> yeah exactly because like like i say we don't know much about that creature so i mean who knows who knows maybe it's just hiding away and he does come, like, only when he's hungry. So, very interesting. Are you sure it's not It's not you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I love food, but... <laughs> when's, when's the last time you were in Puerto Rico now? <laughs> oh, oh my god, good question. No, just... <laughs> 
that I wasn't I wasn't in Puerto Rico last year. That's for sure. I wasn't there last year. So okay, yeah, okay. It wasn't me. It was a... I just just to clarify, <laughs> <laughs> just to clarify. <laughs> It was totally her. It was him. All right. Well, I guess <laughs> I guess that kind of leads us into our third story. Ooh. Keeping with the creature feature theme we have going on. Oh. Indian Army mocked on Twitter for posting photos of Yeti footprints. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Seriously? Yeti. Yeti footprints. So we're not talking about the Yeti coolers. We're actually talking about the Yeti creature, a.k.a. Sasquatch. <laughs> God damn it, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> this is from CBS News. Pictures of a Yeti footprint. The Indian Army posted on social media triggered a barrage of jokes on Tuesday. For the first time, an Indian Army mountaineering expedition team has sighted mysterious footprints of the mythical beast, Yeti. And apparently, serious although misspelled, in several tweets that the Army's official account on Monday, alongside with three images of prints in the snow. It added the elusive snowman has been sighted at the Bakolo Baran National Park in the past, referring to the footprints reported by British explorer Eric Shipton in 1951 on the west side of Mount Everest which, coincidentally, at the Bigfoot Museum, they have a little setup of what we saw there. According to fol folklore, the abominable snowman lives in the Himalayas, but no proof of the erroneous creature has ever been produced. Social media users were quick to jump on the Indian Army for its tweet. With all due respect, institutions such as yourself should be more responsible and careful before going ahead and declaring the sighting of footprints as a Yeti, said one person. There's been a lot of research done on the Bigfoot Yeti, with none providing any evidence. Another added, seriously disappointed to see the Army propagating such foolish myths into reality. Expect better from you guys, one also said. Several Twitter observers asked why there were only one footprint and not two, because the beast would have two feet, right? One Twitter user took the opportunity to jab at the Indian Army over another dubious claim about a much more serious topic. In February, amid soaring tensions with neighboring Pakistan, India's military claimed to have carried out an airstrike on Pakistani territory that was said to have destroyed a terrorist training camp in the Balakat area. However, Pakistan insisted that the missiles had fallen on empty forests along a hillside in the Himalayas, and there were never any evidence that there was anyone there other than the trees. Footprints suggest that Yeti is one-legged. Looks like he lost a leg in the Balakot airstrike, mocked one Twitter user. Others were more forgiving, though still tongue-in-cheek. Congratulations! We are proud of you! Salute to the Indian Army Mountaineering Expedition Team, did one. The Army had the footprints measured 32 inches by 15 inches, 81 centimeters by 38, and were spotted by the team. They were spotted by the team on April the 9th, close to the Makalu base in an isolated area on the Nepal China frontier. An Army official told AFP that the pictures were released to excite a bit of scientific temper. We will share whatever we get with the domain of experts to analyze. We will be contacting a team on the sat phone in the evening for more details about it. The idea is to find out more, to look for an answer, the official told the AFP, speaking on condition of anonymity. The Yeti is traditionally described as an ape-like creature, taller than a man, that lives in the Himalayas, Siberia, and parts of Central and East Asia. Most scientists have written off the creature for centuries as just a myth originating in Tibet. Forensic results of previous samples have proved to only be prehistoric. There you go, guys. That is, I'm just going to start, I'm going to keep on sneaking in Sasquatch stories. You realize that. <laughs> yeah, you you really love the Sasquatch. Mm -hmm. She likes big hairy men. What can we say? <laughs> no. That's just, that's just my thing. That's my thing. <laughs> okay, I got, I got questions. So, 
you, you mentioned very briefly that like you know India and Pakistan have had some like rising tensions and stuff mm-hmm. and it was only a little while ago that they had that like freaking diplomat on a Facebook live stream with a cat filter on by accident like the Pakistani um yes oh my god you're right wait <laughs> They're not very. T- <laughs> yes, you are. You know what? You're right. Yeah. So okay. So that being said, they're not very tech savvy. Therefore, how could they fake some, some photographic evidence, like other than somebody making the footprints themselves? Yeah. I, don't know. I mean, maybe it's just another type of cat filter. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It just it kind of tickles me that these two countries that are just like. They've got rising tensions, there's government problems, and then the feel-good part of it is, well, one country thinks they've seen a Yeti, and the other one can't figure out cat filters, so there we go. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) At any rate, I'm going to put pictures of the tweet in the uh, video so you guys can judge for yourself. I mean, honestly, if it's not one foot, it's someone walking basically toe heel in a straight line. What if it's like one guy on a pogo stick with a stamp on the bottom? You've got a mighty guy. You just imagine just one guy go ba doing ba doing ba doing fucking oh, army. Yeah, that's gotta be it. It's like like a fucking sketch from Looney Tunes, and he just like the army walks up and goes, "What are these mysterious friends?" And the guys behind the trees like, "Ho ho ho." You know who I think that was that was doing that then? If that was if that's the case, go on then, Kevin. Ew, Kevin for. F- of course, Kevin. You know what? That makes perfect sense because, like, he works in Chernobyl and <laughs> is the kind of he lives, yeah, it's the kind of fuckery he gets up to. <laughs> Way to go, Kevin! Way to go, Kevin! Way to go, Kevin! Oh well, then I bet Kevin knows something about the gargoyle in Puerto Rico. Hmm. What? I, why don't you tell us, Kevin? That's the whole reason for this podcast. We're just like going over all the bullshit that Kevin's Every performing all over the Kevin. world. <laughs> Every yep, everything is Kevin. It's just him. All right, well, <laughs> I guess that pretty much wraps up this episode, guys. So I'm so glad that, you know, I, I had a few moments to speak of my obsession. And, you know, clearly the first <laughs> step of your recovery is admitting you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, that obsession with big hairy man. Uh-huh. <laughs> so again, this has been Betty Tucker and Noodles and Talia. Oh, and Kevin over there. Kevin, do you have anything, anything at all to add? No, it's not me. I'm always right. You guys are always wrong. I'm always disappointed. Uh, Of course you are. All right. Well, thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye. (laughs) Bye. They reside in the Pacific Northwest. Shit. I don't know what's wrong with me today. It's just, it's just one of those days. Just breathe it. You got this. Like, yeah. <laughs> At like, least I'm pausing so we can cut all this shit out. Yeah. Like it's. Don't panic. Like I was like that with Chibi, wasn't I? At the start. <laughs> right. Okay, okay. Go for it. The Tlingit people are describing a half man, half ape, or in other words, a Sasquatch. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to cut you guys out. <laughs> no, I'm leaving this in. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're gonna screw up my vibe here. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. I- I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> no, I'm leaving that in. It's br- it's brilliant. <laughs> okay. According to the the Kushtaka is considered an evil and overwhelmingly shit. Kushtaka are considered evil and overwhelmingly regarded with a certain level of trepidation. There are instances of malevolent behavior on part of the Kutash. Hold on a second, guys. My fucking phone's ringing. Like, literally, even your phone's not with it today. <laughs> I know. It's like, God damn it. It's oh, one I of didn't those days. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those days. <laughs> <laughs> I just an image of a Kush Taka. I'm putting it in the fucking recording context because it's hilarious. Look at that thing!
I know. Okay. All <laughs> <laughs> right. There are instances of malevolent behavior on the part of the Kush Taka. Because shit, I fucking damn it. <laughs> this word is cursed. This word is hard. Because shit. The Kush Taka are credited with merrily trickling. Shit. Three. Oh my two, gosh, I feel for you. Fine. The Kashaka are credited with merrily tricking the Lingit sailors offshore further to die. There's also... Fuck my life. Okay. You're, you're mood today. Are you okay? I'm fine. Just tired. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> my I brain's mean, just not working right. To be fair, it's, it is a difficult word. Like Kushtaka. Yeah. You, of course Kushtaka you're going to... Kushtaka. Yeah. And Talingit. You got this. Just mm. take... Like, like I said, you fuck it up, you're doing great. Don't worry. Okay. At least we can cut all this shit out until I actually get it right, and that way we don't have my weird stutter, stutter stops. Mm-hmm. You're doing fine. The Kishtaka are credited with merrily trickling. Shit. So what do you guys think? I think they're very difficult words to say. <laughs> it is a very difficult word to, word to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kushtaka? Kushtaka. Yeah. Something Kushtaka. Okay. I'll lose. That was now, bad. Now, you guys know bad. that... Cut that out. That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry I ruined that part. Anyway, um, let's start. Alright, let me pick it up. I'm gonna pick it up from where I... From... So yeah, that is my first story. Now is your turn. Oh, I just said your whole fucking name. Sorry. When she went out, oh my god, sorry, There's, it's raining, I'm thundering here. Can you guys hear that, actually? I heard the thunder on the car alarm afterwards, yeah. Okay, you may want to, like, Don't worry, yeah, if it's really that bad, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm gonna start out, like, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's weird, because that's, that's what people are, people are fun. Oh my god. <clears throat> um, yeah, it's weird because that's what people are fun. fun. <laughs> oh my god, I'm saying that fucking word. <laughs> it's happening to you too. Kushtaka all over again. Yeah, Kushtaka. That, that fucking story. <laughs> <laughs> the curse of Kushtaka. <laughs> <laughs> soon, I noticed you like messed up as soon as Betty said the word Bigfoot as well. Like, it's fucking cursed. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Three, two. I know it's weird because people. <laughs> Fucking up. I'm so sorry. It's just so funny. <laughs> it's okay. We're we're taking so long to this. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Three. I bet. I bet. What about like? Wait, hold on. That came out so bad. Damn it. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> Two. I mean, I cannot even say this. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Three. 